this video is not sponsored by Twinings. Which is a real shame because I'm just about to make a Twinings cup of tea. Nice cup of calm. Hi, I'm Alex. And in this video, I want to talk about coping with generalised anxiety disorder. Last year, I created a video living with generalised anxiety disorder. I got a comment on that yesterday and I've realised that video now had over 2000 views. So I want to do a follow up as since then I felt much worse and much better. I just want to talk through some of the things I do to cope. One of those is drink a nice cup of calming tea. Sometimes I think that our society is very coffee driven and coffee is great for giving us energy, making us just want to get up and go more, but it can also just amplify our feelings. And if you're suffering from anxiety, it can make you feel even more anxious. So a nice cup of chamomile tea, I think this one has some spiced apple in, which I really enjoy, can just help do the reverse of coffee and calm you down and calm the way you're feeling down, which can be really, really helpful. Yesterday, I did something I really struggled to do, and I filmed a video on a camera that I don't particularly like to use because it was grainy, I wasn't sure about the sound quality, but sometimes just picking up whatever you've got there, doing things and putting yourself out there, or just doing what you know you need to do is really important. Even if it's not gonna be the perfect outcome, sometimes, just getting things done, just moving things forward is the antidote to anxiety. So in that video, you'll see that I was feeling a little bit anxious. So I went on the bike and it just got easier and easier the more I forced myself to do things. This is an intro to that video because my ego won't let me put out something that's too grainy and too bad a sound quality. I just wanna put some context into that. Before I show you me going through one of my coping mechanisms and dealing with it step by step, I just want to talk about a short analogy, which you may or may not have heard, that of the woodcutter. Someone who goes down, his job day in, day out, is to cut down trees. He gets a job, well paid, and in his first day, he cuts down 18 trees. His boss is very, very happy. The next day, he cuts down 15 trees. He doesn't know what's going wrong, so he thinks I'm gonna work even harder. But the next day, he only cuts down 12, then 10, then eight. He's working harder and harder, getting more and more stressed. Now, the answer to this analogy, which can be really simple to see from the outside, is that the woodcutter isn't taking the time to sharpen his ax. If he did, he'd be back to cutting those 18 trees day in, day out. Now, when I first heard that analogy, I was in a good place and I thought, of course, that's obvious. Taking the time to study, taking the time to learn, taking the time to improve our craft, it's so simple, we just need to do it. But when you're suffering with generalized anxiety disorder, you can really start to think about how the woodcutter's feeling, the stress, the depression, the not understanding why, just wanting to push harder, push harder, perhaps not thinking and realizing that his ax is getting less and less sharp, thinking it's all about him and his strength. It can be very, very daunting. And I think it's a great analogy, both to know what we need to do, but also maybe to have some empathy for that woodcutter and say, I understand why he or she is going through what they're going through. And maybe they just need a bit of help, a bit of guidance, maybe a bit of help to sharpen their ax in the first place. So with that said, I'm gonna go into the video that I filmed yesterday. Hi, I'm Alex. And I don't think I've done this before, uh, which is just film a video that's grainy. Uh, I haven't scripted it. Um, I'm saying um quite a bit, 
but I've just had a comment on a video I put out um, last year. Um, living with generalised anxiety disorder. And I haven't followed up on that uh, much since. In fact, there was a four month gap or so where I wasn't even able to film any YouTube videos. And since that video, I've been much worse, which is part of the reason I couldn't film any YouTube videos. And largely, uh, particularly uh, this year, 2022, much better. But the issues are that what I've suffered with with generalised anxiety disorder doesn't necessarily go away in my experience. It, I can have times where I'm great, um, I can have long periods where I'm, uh, for want of a better word, terrible, but what I have, how I responded to this comment was to say that it is just about getting used to and appreciating living with some of these thoughts and feelings, but also improving our coping mechanisms. So I've actually just been uh, away on a family holiday, which was both lovely and because it was outside of my norm and my comfort zone, wasn't always necessarily the most relaxing experience. Uh, it was in Turkey, it was 30 degrees out there. Uh, I often use the gym as a coping mechanism, but that wasn't air conditioned. So that made that quite challenging. I tried a few days working out in that and it was um, uh, unpleasant to say the least to try and do a workout in an extremely hot, unair conditioned gym. But uh, back, back home now and still feeling fine, but um, anxious and um, Normally I just go and do what I'm going to do, but I just wanted to film this video quickly to say that uh, I'm going to go and uh, try and sit on my indoor exercise bike now, which I find a very good coping mechanism, very calming. Um, and hopefully I'll follow up with this, um, with a second video, which I might say um in less, just, just to sort of see how working on something that you know is going to make you feel better even though you don't really want to do it right now I'm tired I'm achy I'm really not in the mood but if I don't do something I know that that's going to lead down a not positive path as opposed to just taking this stop here this break here to make a positive change um, and I just wanted to put this message out there so we're now on to a second grainy video. Um, I haven't done any exercise yet, um, but what I have done since I last filmed, which was uh, probably about 10, 10, 15 minutes ago, was get dressed and ready to do some exercise. And as part of things not going to plan, my son's just come in. Yeah, that's absolutely fine, Sean. Um, and I think that's the point. Life doesn't always go to plan. There are disruptions, but sometimes pushing through and making sure. So even to our things, I don't normally film on this iPad, so I hate the iPads in the sense that the filming the camera is off to the left. So I'm naturally drawn to look at my own self because that's where the screen is. So if I can try and focus and look here. Sometimes, often, I find the biggest challenge is taking that first step in this sense, getting changed to do some exercise. And that can often be the hardest step and it can become a bigger and bigger step the longer we don't do it. Um, so I'm not by any means in the worst place I've been, um, but if you don't, if I don't make that first step in getting changed, then I couldn't exercise and I couldn't lead on to better decisions. Taking that first step to do something positive is always the most important one. I'm actually standing up on a indoor bike, uh, which is why the angle is slightly odd, but you're triangulated towards the corner of a room behind me. Um, and if I'm moving slightly oddly, but that's where I'm gonna do my exercise on this bike. And um, I think when I started filming this sort of catch up, it made sense to do it. 
and I realised just from brief, briefly watching myself back made no sense at all because you can't see the bike that I'm on. Um, maybe I'll put a picture up. I'm going to put this on YouTube. Uh, with that said, I better actually do exercise, otherwise the whole point of this is for nothing. One hour later. So I've just done an hour on the bike and I feel much better. Uh, I was right. Um, the hardest bit was getting changed. Uh, the next hardest bit was the first 20 minutes on the bike. 40 minutes later, I was able to just keep on going. But time and time again, I tend to find once I've done half an hour or definitely an hour, uh, anything else is just obsessive. And don't get me wrong, I often do obsessive things in lots of areas of life and particularly on the bike. Um, but today is just a really good example of doing what I need to keep my, to keep my head clear. Uh, and now I'm ready to just crack on with the day. Uh, I say that it's um, 10 to two in the afternoon. So uh, not really an early start to the day, but I've just come back from Turkey. Didn't get into the UK till just gone four, slept a good chunk of it. So I feel ready and raring to, to get going. With that said, uh, I better go and uh, I'll catch you later. So I don't know if this has been any use, but I do know if you're suffering or have suffered with generalized anxiety disorder, it can be really, really difficult, debilitating at times. But, and this is a lot easier for me to say than do, although I have to do it myself in my own daily life, sometimes it's just getting round to doing that one next thing that you know will help. Not necessarily working, but using that woodcut analogy I gave at the beginning, and as I gave you in my video, for me, that cycling and riding is something that I know will help clear my mind make me feel better. The first step I need to do is get changed. It should, in theory, be the easiest part, but so often it's the most difficult part. Staying on the bike for the first 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, that becomes the hardest part after that. But once you get into the swing of things, once your head starts to clear, it becomes easier and easier. So maybe you could leave in the comments what you do to help you, to help you clear your head, to help you feel better. If you've liked this video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and around me now, I'll leave my living with Gemini's anxiety disorder if you haven't seen that or you'd like to see that. Until next time, I've been Alex. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Alex. And in this video, I want to talk about having a sip of tea.